You look so beautiful from up here, class of 2015. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to business though. Our first week at Brown, 500 of us packed Solomon Lecture Hall for introduction to neuroscience. As the professors concluded their opening lecture, a student asked what seemed like a simple question. Is it true we only use 10% of our brains? Without hesitation, Professor Paradiso answered, I don't know. Our professor, renowned neuroscientist, didn't know. He said, new research suggests we don't really know what percent of our brains we use for neural processes like thinking. The field doesn't know yet, so I don't know. The room went quiet. Students sat up straighter, ears perked up. The only sound was of the mental gears in 500 brown student minds churning. I heard whispers of, how could you measure that on a cellular level? Could you stain brain tissue or create a computer program? Our collective curiosity galvanized us. Unimpressed by knowledge alone, by facts already discovered, we were ignited by what we didn't know. For the next four years, seeking out these I don't know moments became our daily challenge, our intellectual regimen. Brown made our attraction to the unknown, the undiscovered, the unresolved, magnetic. Even before we arrived on campus, Brown dared us in our admissions essays to answer the question, what don't you know? And our open curriculum is the university trusting in us, saying, we don't know every course you'll need to make your impact on the world. Only you can discover that. A Brown education is being challenged to discern exactly what you don't know. This is Brown's most distinguishing strength and its greatest adventure. We probe visiting dignitaries, testing resolutions to global conflicts as if they could be solved right there in the lecture hall. We cherish controversies yet unsettled, problems yet unresolved, doctrines long unchallenged. We don't just embrace the unknown, we ask it out to fair trade coffee with its enthusiastic consent. <laughs> yeah, we do. If author John Foles is right that an answer is a form of death, saying I don't know breathes life into our restless minds. When we asked whose stories are missing from the history of the civil rights movement, our I don't know sent members of our class and faculty to Tougaloo, Mississippi, searching for silenced voices. When we asked what was Brown's relationship to slavery, our I Don't Know launched investigations that rewrote our university's history. Does the Higgs boson exist? The curiosity of brown physicists hurls them into experiments at CERN's particle accelerator week after week after week. Apparently, people at CERN say I don't know a lot. But beyond the brown bubble, it can be hard to say I don't know. In our information age, we're rewarded for absorbing knowledge, for being excellent sponges. We're conditioned to fear moments when we don't know, moments of vulnerability. Last summer, I worked for a nonprofit law firm. One client was facing deportation back to Ghana, but required thrice weekly dialysis for her kidney failure. Dialysis in Ghana is both scarce and expensive, but we needed proof that deporting her was tantamount to a death sentence. I suggested a Ghanaian doctor's testimony to the lack of access. Great, said my boss, how can we get that? I don't know, but I will find out. I started by contacting Brown professors who had done field work in Ghana. They directed me to the largest hospital. And then a friend in the class of 2015 was visiting Ghana with a Brown-founded medical nonprofit, Yao Lu. He directed me, <laughs> Yao, Yao, Yao. He directed me to another member of our class, Nia Campina Bakot, who was conducting research at that main hospital. 
She then tracked down the chief dialysis physician, got her testimony, and sent it back to us across the Atlantic for our client's case. I was in awe of the power of the Brown community, operating not just beyond these gates, but halfway around the world. I don't know wasn't a dead end in the conversation. It was a beginning. But I don't know is not only the first step on the path to discovery. It's also a critical step on the path to human connection. Researchers have demonstrated the power of unconscious bias. When we meet someone new, we're conditioned to think we already know them. To borrow Nietzsche's term, there is no immaculate perception. Socially constructed stereotypes seep into our subconscious. They sow assumptions about our fellow citizens, our fellow human beings. Preconceptions and misconceptions about race, class, gender, language, religion, sexuality, nationality, and ability profoundly shape our world. They structure our institutions and delimit our possibilities. Their reverberations are felt from France to Ferguson, from Birmingham to Baghdad, from Baltimore to Brown. Bias is dangerous precisely because it is false knowledge. Because the truth is, we don't know. We cannot know how someone thinks from a weak data set of appearances and social constructions. We as humans are too complex, too dynamic, too surprising, and too magnificent. To know what someone thinks, we have to ask them what they think. This is the first step towards what President Paxson calls transformative conversation. Throughout our time at Brown, we've thrown ourselves into transformative conversations, and they have brought us moments both uncomfortable and powerful. We've used what we've learned from each other to strengthen our academic and personal lives. I don't know is thus not only an intellectual mantra, it's also a project of humanization. Anthropologist and author Zora Neale Hurston wrote, there are years that ask questions and there are years that answer them. Even though she went to Columbia, she's right. <laughs> this is a year that asks questions, some of them personal. Where will we take our lives after graduation? How will we stay connected to the lifelong friends and mentors that we've made here? Some are vast. How will we combat climate change and end mass incarceration? How will we alleviate income inequality and improve education? And some of our questions are deeply reflective. Am I enough? Am I brave enough to confront my own biases? Am I strong enough to persevere in solving the issues I care about. These questions push us into uncomfortable places. To many of them, our answer may be, today and often, I don't know. But Brown has given us every tool and every reason to venture boldly into our discomfort. This is how we've grown. Every day, We've challenged each other to take no observation, no dominant narrative, no established truth at face value. Every day, we've challenged each other to hold self-evident, only that nothing <laughs> is self-evident. Brown has shown us that the very engine of discovery and insight, of progress and justice, of our future and the world's is our fearless, relentless questioning. This is our greatest power. Brown has taught us that in this community, within these gates and far beyond, I don't know merely means I don't know yet.